Hello, everyone. Michelle Riley coming back for another episode. Uh, we are reviewing the 2023 Notary Accountability Act that goes into effect here in Alabama on September 1, 2023. If this is your first time or first video that you're watching, I want to encourage you. This is really number five or six. So if, if this is the first one you're watching, please go back and watch the earlier videos. There's some really important information in those as well. I'm the owner of Notaries for Alabama, and I'm coming to you from Madison County. Notaries for Alabama helps Alabama residents become successful Alabama notaries. And we do that by assisting you with the commission process, the steps you have to take to become commissioned. Um, we help you by getting you bonded, insured, and most importantly, trained so that you understand what Alabama notary laws are. That's the only introduction I'm gonna do for now because we have a lot of information to cover. I'm trying to keep these videos within 20 to 30 minutes. So let's go ahead and dive in. We have already covered the law changes that affect the commission process. Now we're in the section where we are covering the new accountabilities, the new guidelines, the new requirements for notaries, whether you're new or old. And these requirements will be enforced on September 1, 2023. And I say that because when I look at it, I don't see anything brand new from what those of us who have gone through training already know. But now it is being outlined in detail in the notary law. And my understanding is it's going to be enforced. So it's really important that you know about these guidelines. All right. So uh, we're still covering new accountabilities. And guess what? It is not on the screen, is it? So let me quickly do a um, screen share. I apologize for that. I do, I do, I do. But I'm going to just keep it going. Um, I guess I could have let that be up, go up a little more. Um, for reference purposes, this is covering Act number 2023-548. It is formally known as Senate Bill 322. I've nicknamed it the Alabama Notary Accountability Act of 2023 because it is all about holding commissioned notaries accountable for what we do and don't do. It was signed into law by Governor Kay Ivey on June 14th of this year, but it goes into effect on September the 1st. All right, so what are we talking about today? We are going over the actions that, or the crimes, <laughs> Um, that fall under the category of a Class C misdemeanor. So if you are a commissioned notary and you do any of these things, you are, can be found guilty of a Class C misdemeanor. First bullet is pretending to be a commissioned notary. I think folks who are doing that are far and few between, but... It is happening not only in Alabama, but in other states. It is very easy to obtain a notary seal. 
Um, thanks to the internet, you can go online to different sites, place your order, and not all of them, very few if any, will ask you to first produce a, your commission. Um, most will just collect your payment and send you a embosser or a stamp with your seal on it. And those are folks who pretend to be commissioned and they aren't. Second bullet, performing a notarization when your commission is expired, suspended, or revoked. A um, couple things I want to point out here is that um, what isn't new, it's always been wrong to notarize when your commission expires. As you know, um, our terms are four-year terms in Alabama. And unless you are notarizing signatures frequently and including the commission expiration date, it is easy to forget when your renewal date is. That is why it is a best practice to always include your commission expiration date for every notarization, even if the form does not require or request it. It's just a good way, a good habit. Um, but notice we've got two new status, suspension and revocation of a commission. And we talked about that previously um, in the last video, because now, well, beginning September 1st, our probate judges in each county have the power to file an injunction um, against us and to revoke, suspend um, our commissions. Um, and so third bullet, notarizing signatures before taking the oath of office. Now this one um, is a little tricky. I say that it's tricky because no one ever administered the oath of office to me. Um, those of us in Madison County, when we go to the clerk's office, we take our, uh, well, the probate office, we take our bond, our payment, our ID, um, but no one has ever asked me to raise my right hand and take an oath. And I did an informal poll. And um, I would say out of the 67 counties, maybe seven of them um, require notaries to perform the oath of office. And so it's going to be interesting to me to see how this is gonna play out. I'm not sure if when we go to the probate office, if the clerks there will now formally ask us to raise our right hand and repeat after them, or, because this is what about seven counties currently do, they tell their notary applicants before they get to the probate office to locate another notary and have that notary administer the oath of office and swear in the applicant documented in their journal and on the notary bond. For those who don't know, page one of the notary surety bond has the oath of office verbiage. And um, I'll read it real quick. And so when we notaries are sworn in, this is what we should be doing. We should say, um, I, Michelle Riley, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the state of Alabama, so long as I continue a citizen thereof, and that I will faithfully and honestly discharge the duties of the office upon which I am about to enter to the best of my ability, so help me God. It really brings home the importance of the role of the notary. And um, I think it holds us, it raises the bar, it holds us accountable. I can't now say 
I didn't know I took it lightly. No, I took a solemn oath to follow the laws of Alabama and of the United States. And so now this is going to be a requirement. And again, it remains to be seen how that gets implemented. All right, the next bullet. You'll um, guilty of a class C misdemeanor if you charge a fee in excess of the maximum fee amount. As we discussed in an earlier video, the current no, uh, maximum fee that we notaries can charge is $5 per notarization or per notarial act. I'm not going to get into in this video how to determine that, but it is outlined clearly in the current Alabama Notary Handbook. Thank you so much, Secretary of, Alabama Secretary of State's office. That handbook has been out since 2019, and it is definitely one of the most important parts of notary basics training that um, I offer. But that $5 fee will increase on September 1st, 2023 to $10 per notarial act. And here, this is telling us that if I take it upon myself to charge more than that, I could be found guilty of a Class C misdemeanor. I know for sure, there are many Alabama notaries charging more than that. I have had re Alabama residents call my office uh, mistakenly thinking that I am associated with the uh, county, state government, and I have to educate them and let them know that I'm not a privately owned um company, but they called to complain to me because they were overcharged. And sometimes I'm not just talking a few dollars. I mean, anything over the, the maximum amount is unacceptable. But what I'm hearing, it just, it's ridiculous. And so now this gives Alabama residents the opportunity to um, correct the notary's mistake um, and take action against the notary for being overcharged. The next bullet, performing a notarization without requiring personal appearance. I tell you, I'm going to do a whole uh, webinar on this one thing. Um, there are many layers to it. Um, personal appearance is showing up in the flesh in front of the notary. Um, some of you are thinking this is a no-brainer. I beg to differ. differ. Um, this is one that catches a lot of notaries, and I can understand why, because I was one of those notaries. I think notaries who are uh, really at risk for doing this are notaries who work in an office and have obtained their commission because their employer required it. I'm willing to bet this goes on every day. Every single day in Alabama, in medical offices, in um, law firms, in process server offices, PI offices, insurance agency, in every business, every type of office. Uh, notaries are not requiring the signer to appear before the notary in the flesh. That is happening in part because their colleagues, their bosses, their superiors are making requests of the notary 
to waive that requirement. And it's not being said that way. Case in point, when I've done it, this was before I had any formal training. I was an administrative assistant to the officers of the organization. And it was very common that the, as the CEO would come into the office over the weekend or at night and especially when the CEO was planning to travel for the next week or so, I would come in the next morning and there would be a folder on my desk with a post-it note that said, Michelle, please notarize and mail off to wherever. In that instance, the CEO did not appear before me. But yet I'm like, okay, I recognize my boss's signature. I would go ahead and sign and stamp. That is wrong. It is also wrong if a colleague that I know very well comes in to work and says, Michelle, my um, husband and I are are sending our child to camp. We both had to sign off on a form, giving him permission. My husband's at work. He signed it. Here it is. Can you notarize both of our signatures? And then if I protest, the colleague will say, Michelle, you know, Frank, George, Idris, call him on the phone. He'll tell you that he signed off on this. You can, I cannot do that. Her husband, my coworker's husband did not personally appear before me. And so this is one, and I'll talk more about it in the final video. This is one that I think of all of these new requirements, this is the one that's gonna get the most notaries. I think this will be the first time charges will be filed against an Alabama notary. It's going to be over um, them not requiring personal appearance. This also happens for split signings. A split signing is when a document uh, needs signatures to be notarized and the notarial certificate lists, I'll say, I was going to say five, but oh yeah, five people's names are in the notarial certificate, but only one of those individuals is here in Alabama with me. And if I'm not trained on how to properly perform that split notarization, because everyone else is in another county or state. I may just go ahead and sign my name and stamp it, thinking that it only pertains to the affiant or the signer who is before me. But because I did not adjust or cure the notary certificate and make the necessary alterations or changes, the way it reads is, or the way it appears on paper, is that all five people appeared before me and they didn't. So this is very important. Moving on, performing a notarization without verifying the signer's identity or without personally knowing the signer. Of all of these on this slide, to me, this should be the no-brainer. Um, Government issue ID is required in order to verify someone's identity that you don't personally know. I'm really happy they included personal knowledge or personally knowing the signer. That has always been um, in Alabama, in most states, that's always been a, 
I'll call it a best practice or an acceptable practice. If I personally know you, I don't have to ask to see your driver's license. But what I tell even colleagues that I work with, I want to see your ID the first time. I know we work together. I know I've been calling you Abigail all this time. But for a notarization, I want to see that you truly are Abigail Alexander. You sign my journal. Now, Abigail, when you need a second document notarized next week and the week after that, I personally know you. I'm not requiring your ID. Government issue ID, this is covered in the Alabama, the current handbook. I'm sure it will be addressed in the new handbook. I believe revisions are underway um, because I went on the Secretary of State's website and it wasn't where it normally is. But if you're looking for the current handbook, you can find it on www.trainalabama.com. That is one of uh, my websites. Um, I've got it there. It's free. You can download it and review it. But the government issue ID really should have the signer's photograph, um, signature, and description. Um, and a description would include date of birth, um, eye color, height, weight, that sort of thing. Okay. Taking a verification or proof without verifying the identity of a witness or without personally knowing the witness. To be honest, I'm not 100% sure what they mean by verification or proof, but you know what? I'm okay with that. Why? I'm focusing on the most important part of this um, bullet item, which is verifying the identity of a witness. That's the most important thing. And where I think they're coming from is there are documents out there that require not only a notarization, but also one or more witnesses to the notarization. And something that I've run into more than once is when the signer, the person who calls me to travel to meet them, be it at a hospital, their home or business, they don't tell me over the phone that the form requires not only notarization, but witnesses. So I get there and I'm like, this requires witnesses. Oh, I didn't know. Let's just go ahead and do it. And you can notarize my signature, Michelle, and I'll find family member or a friend or my neighbor will do it. I'll tell her she'll do it for me. I'm sure other notaries have run into that as well. Based on this now, I, I won't put my name anywhere on it. No, I'm not going to notarize your signature on this form if there are no witnesses present because the form requires witnesses to be present. And then if I'm asked, well, Michelle, can you be a witness? I'm going to redirect them to consult whoever prepared the form and more importantly to an attorney, their lawyer. The last bullet item, performing an acknowledgement for a transaction where the notary has financial interest or a pecuniary, no, pecuniary with, um, interest. Wow, I really botched that up. Um, Again, this seems like a no-brainer, but it isn't. Um, last week, late last week, got a call from an individual who said they've been a notary for 30 years. They've been notarizing their parents' signature on documents all these years. They've notarized previous powers of attorney for their parent try my best not to disclose any identifiable information. And um, this person was very upset because this time the bank, someone at the bank said, oh no, we cannot accept this. And of course, I just had to stir the pot a little bit. And I said, by the way, are you designated as your parents' attorney in fact? 
Absolutely. So in that case, and that's an obvious case, if I'm being named as someone's attorney, if in fact, and I'm a notary, I should not be notarizing that form. I definitely have a financial interest, but there are more subtle examples of this. We don't have time to get into it right now, but it is so important that notaries, our role is to be an unbiased witness. And so if indirectly or directly, if it even can be perceived that we have an interest, a financial interest, we need to find another notary to handle this. All right, we're coming up to 30 minutes. I wanted to keep it less than that. We are very close to being finished. This completes the new accountabilities piece of the new law that goes into effect September 1st. When we meet next time, um, I like to spend a little time talking about remote notarization. This continues to come up. I'm not going to elaborate. We'll touch on that. Then we'll do a review of what we covered. I really want to focus on what happens now, what's occurring between June 15 through August 31st. What should you be doing? What do you need to know? And then um, I'll provide some comments about um, next steps, what we should expect um, coming up as we get closer to September 1, because we've got some unanswered questions still um, about the law, the new fees, the new um, requirements. So by then, um, I should have some more answers. I hope you found this helpful information. Again, go back, review the other videos, especially if you're a commissioned notary and especially if you employ notaries. You need to know what uh, is coming down the pipeline. Thanks again. I hope you find this helpful. Please, if you haven't already, subscribe like this so that these videos will show up in your YouTube feed. And if you have any questions, please post them below in the comments and I'll make every effort to respond very quickly. Have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you back here soon.